Hi guys, this is Sadek from Dropdown.com and in this video, we'll show you how to flash the latest Lineage OS 21 GSI ROM based on Android 14 on any Android phone. So please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. First of all, you will have to get hold of Android SDK platform tools. So get it from my guide and extract them onto your PC. You could extract them anywhere you want. In my case, I've done the extraction in C drive and these are the files of platform tools as you could see. Once that is done, your next course of action is to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. USB debugging is required to e execute ADB command, whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the bootloader on your phone. So let's now carry out both this task. For that, go to settings menu, then go to about phone and tap on MIUI version 7 times in case of Xiaomi, Poco and Redmi. In case of all the other phones, it will be build number. Once that is done, go back, then go to additional settings and you should now see developer option. From there, enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. You will get a prompt on your phone. In case of Xiaomi phones, you will get a warning sign as well. So check mark, I'm aware of all the risk. Then tap on OK. And with this debugging is enabled, you will get an RC key prompt as well. So in that case, tap on OK. And with this debugging is now enabled. So let's verify the same. For that, go to platform to folder address bar, type in CMD and hit enter. This will launch command prompt inside platform tools. Now type in ADB devices and make sure that you are getting an ID. If you are not getting any serial ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC. Disable and re-enable USB debugging. Tap on revoke USB debugging. Use the official cable that came with your phone and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out this USB tweaks and make sure that you are getting an ID. Once you are getting this ID, let's now move ahead. So now you will have to unlock the bootloader on your phone. Do note that doing so will wipe off all the data and it might make the warranty null and void as well. So if that's well and good, you could refer to my guide or the video and get this job done. In short, you will have to boot your phone to fastboot mode and then use the fastboot flashing unlock command. Whereas in case of Xiaomi, Poco and Redmi phones, you will have to use the official Mi Unlock tool and get this job done. Once you have unlocked the bootloader, make sure to re-enable USB debugging on your phone and then move ahead. So now you will you could get hold of the ROM file. So as of now, the Lineage OS 21 is available on two variants. One is the light and the second one is the TD. The TD is the triple droid and it is mostly used for older Android phones as well as for Samsung phones. On the other hand, the light version have fewer patches but are known to work with new and modern phones. So as of now, I'll be using the light version. So you may go to the detailed link and try out the both of them first off try out the light version and if that does not work then you can try out the triple dot version as well but as of now let's try the light version moreover once you go there you could see this is the light and this is the triple dot version so let's go to the light version and inside that you will get a couple of variants as well so regarding this i made a separate guide on which rom variant you could download so you could refer to my guide as well so in short let me show you First off is the CPU architecture. Most of the Android phones nowadays have ARM64 and the ROM is also there in ARM64 for all the three variants. So that's not an issue. Next up we have the V or the G variant. The V is the vanilla variant with no Google Apps and the G is the variant that has Google Apps. After that we have the S or the N variant. The S includes super user which is a rooted GSI. On the other hand N is no super user which means it's a non-rooted GSI. So in case if you're using the rooted GSI, then you might come across a few issues such as the play integrity issues or the safety net issues. Whereas if you use the N variant, it will be non-rooted and there will be no root issues. But with that said, even if you use the root variant, you could still rectify all the issues. I have made separate guides on the same. You could refer to my guide and pass the play integrity test as well as the safety net test as well. The choice is all yours. You could simply refer to my guide and I have listed all the instruction regarding the CPU architecture as well as the AB, VG, NS and VNDK Lite. This is not required as of now. So you could refer to my guide as of now. Just get hold of the required ROM file from here. And once you have got the firmware, it will be in a .exe format. So you could extract them for extraction. I'm using the 7-zip software. So right click on it, then select show more option. Then choose 7-zip and extract to file name. With this, you will get the file inside this IMG folder. So simply copy this entire IMG ROM file and transfer it to the platform to folder on your PC. So let's do the transfer. And once that is done, let's rename it to something shorter. 
So for the ease of convenience, let's rename it to GSI and the complete name becomes GSI.IMG. So let's now move ahead with the next step. So once we have got the ROM file, you will now have to download the VBMeta file. Make sure that it is the same version with make sure it's of the same version which is currently installed onto your phone. You can verify the same from the build number of your phone. So for instance, let me show you depending on the phone that you own, the option should be there in the settings menu about phone build number. So in my case, the build number is 14060 and the region is IN. So make sure to download the same version which correspond to the firmware version as well as the region code. In case of Xiaomi, the first is the Android version which is T Android 13 then LM is the device code and after that is the region which is you could see IN is in my case so you could download the firmware according to the region as well as the firmware version so let me show you as of now I'm using the Xiaomi 14 version 060 TLMIN XM it's the same version which is there inside my phone so you, you will also have to get hold of the same fast boot ROM or the stock firmware once you have got the firmware, simply extract it. Upon extraction, you will get a few IMG, MBN and XML files. So you will have to copy the VBMeta file from here and transfer the file to the platform folder on your PC. In case of Pixel phones and Xiaomi phones, the fastboot ROM or the firmware is in the zip format. You could simply extract them. But in case of OnePlus, it's in a bin format. Rather, it's the payload.bin file. So for extracting that, you could use a tool name as Fireboot Enhance. So what you have to do is simply download the OnePlus ROM, extract it. Upon extracting, you will get a couple of files, including payload.bin. So copy paste the payload bin file inside the Fireboot Enhance folder. Then launch the Fireboot Enhance tool. Go to the payload dumper tab, click on Browse. Then select the payload bin file and click on Open. After that, go to the Partition tab. And from here, you could select the VBMeta file and also checkmark allow incremental then click on extract image choose a location and the image will then be extracted onto the desktop in my case let me show you this is the file you may then transfer the file to the platform to folder so in this way make sure to get hold of the vbmeta file for your phone i am again repeating it should be of the same firmware version which is currently installed onto your phone so with this as of now both the vbmeta file as well as the gsi rom should be there inside the platform to folder on your pc once that is done we could now move ahead with the next step. So now you will have to boot your phone to fast boot mode. For that, just type in ADB, reboot, bootloader and hit enter. And your phone will now reboot into fast boot mode. It could take up to a few seconds. Do note that this screen might vary depending on the phone that you are using. In my case, I'm using a Xiaomi phone. So this is the fast boot screen in my case. Now let's verify the fast boot connection. So type in fast boot devices and hit enter and make sure that you're getting a serial ID. If you're not getting any ID, then you'll have to install fastboot drivers. I have made a separate guide and a video on the same. You could refer to my guide and get the job done. Once you've installed the drivers, right click on the windows icon and select device manager. Then expand the Android phone section and make sure that your phone is being shown as Android bootloader interface. So this as well as the serial ID next to fastboot signify that the PC is able to read the phone in fastboot mode and you are now good to go ahead. So next up, you will now have to Disable the verification check by flashing the VBMeta file from your phone. So for that, simply copy the entire command and paste it in the CMD window and hit enter. It will now flash the VBMeta file and then disable the verification check as well. Once that is done, you will now have to boot your phone to the fastboot D mode. So for that, type in fastboot, reboot fastboot and your phone will then boot into the fastboot D mode. Once again, this screen might vary depending on the phone that you are using. So let's just wait for a few more seconds and our phone will then boot into the fastboot D mode. And with this, we are inside the fastboot D. So let's now move ahead. So now we will first and foremost have to remove the product A partition so as to make space for the GSI ROM. In other words, to make space for the system partition file to be installed onto our phone because the GSI ROM is nothing but a system file, system.img file. So we will have to remove the product A partition from our phone so as to make space for the GSI ROM. So simply copy this entire command and paste it in the CMD window and hit enter. And with this, we have removed the product A partition and now we could flash the GSI ROM. So for that, just use this command and simply replace the name of the file. In our case, the name of the file is GSI.img and hit enter. 
the flashing will now start as you could see we are flashing the gsi rom in the system partition and the gsi rom is having 12 sub system partition so it will install each of these individual system partition files and the entire process could take up to around 10 to 15 minutes so let's just wait for the flashing to complete and then we will have to do our format data and after that we could boot our phone to the os so let's just wait for the time being so guys the flashing is now complete now your last course of action is to do a format data this will wipe off all the data from your phone so just type in fastboot space dash w and hit enter and it will now start doing a format data once that is done you could now boot your phone to the os for that type in fastboot reboot and hit enter and you, your phone will now reboot into the os do keep in mind that the first boot up might take up some additional time frame this is completely normal and nothing to worry about moreover let's just wait for the boot animation to show up once that happens it signifies that the flashing has been done successfully so let's just see so as you could see it's the lineage os boot animation and this means that the flashing has been done and the first boot up could take up to 30 40 seconds this is all normal and nothing to worry about so let's just wait for a phone to boot up so guys the boot up was somewhat very fast that was not expected in fact that's quite good to see anyways let's get started with the os setup and as of now I'll skip the initial setup process and take you to the OS. It will take me just a few more seconds. So let me skip all this. If you want, you may take, you may restore the, the data right away. But as of now, I'll skip the restore as well. And with this, we are inside the latest Lineage OS 21 OS based on Android 14. And this is the QS tiles as you could see from here. And this is the app drawer home screen. And this is the app drawer. And since I have used the super user version, I have the super user app as well. Then I'll have to complete the root process that I may do later on. Anyway, let me show you the ROM process as well. So these are all the lineage OS ROM that come pre-installed as you might be aware of the same. Apart from that, this is the settings menu. And these are the few tweaks that comes with every PHH based ROM. So if there is any issue with the audio, then you could carry out these tweaks do, know, do note that there is no universal fix as such you will have to keep on trying until you achieve the success with that said as you could see the screen resolution and refresh rate you could tweak from here and choose the maximum one if you want but that will consume more battery apart from that you may override the minimum brightness as well override v voice over lte and spoof system properties this is only required for rooted phone so in case if you are using the super user build of the ROM then you should enable this and you might be able to pass the safety net and play integrity and these are the few IMS is mostly required if you are facing any issues with VOLTE or uh, yes mostly for VOLTE in case of 5G and in Indian region whereas in for using the Geo 5G phones in that case Geo 5G carrier sim in that case that might be required an IMS and apart from that these are the same ui that you get across all the os and this is the wallpaper and screen that you could select from here and choose the ui accordingly it picks up the ma major color depending on the wallpaper so as of now the lineage os main color is green so it's picking up that itself apart from that you could also choose from some other colors as well and it will change the theme accordingly as you could see from here so as of now let's go with the lineage os as well you could also enable the dark theme and apart from that let's enable the device shortcut would be there on the lock screen across both the left and right corner of your phone as you could see we have both implemented then on the home screen you could implement the theme icons so let's verify the same and as you could see it's implemented apart from that you could also change the app grid and take up to six cross six in pixel phones it's mostly till 5 cross 5 but we are getting a few additional options in the pixel rom which is good to see then you could change the uh, wi-fi and all such icon pack as well and it will not only change the wi-fi icon pack but it will also change the icons corresponding to battery and everything which is shown in the status bar as you could see from here all the six icons will be changed whatever you choose from here so as of now let's go with the default one and apart from that we have a few font style as well that you could select and this is the default one finally 
the icon shapes are there which you could choose from and apply it so it has a few ui tweaks this is exactly similar to what you will get in the stock pixel ui and these are all those features tap to sleep so double tap to sleep is also there and it's working double tap to wake requires some custom kernel so that might not work and apart from that you have a few other tweaks as well similar to what you get with the pixel and these are the IMS version as you could see it's on the latest android 14 build so guys on that note i round up this video if you have any queries do let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching